Hi guys, how you doing? It's Craig Vi here for another episode of Youth Watch. And it's the first one of the new season, let's say. The pre-season has started, it's begun in earnest, and I know a lot of you have been asking, what's going on with the academy? What's going on with the youth players? So here I am, I'm back, and I'm here to give you an update. So very, very quickly, I'm gonna talk you through what we're gonna be talking about today. The first thing I'm gonna talk about, the head at the top of the show, is Marcus Edwards, the jewel in the crown of the academy. More on that in a second. I also want to talk about Nia Kirby. Ooh, a little bit of bad news coming there. Uh, then I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, players that have been released and renewed. I'm going to talk to you about uh, all of the players in the under 21s and the 18s who we've who we've either let go or we've renewed their contracts. I touch a little bit on the the uh, Euros at under 19s for England, uh, and then I want to talk a little bit about the season's predictions for the under 21s and under 18s. So. Here we go, with no further ado, let's kick off with the story about Marcus Edwards. You will all be really pleased to hear, I'm sure. And some of you probably know already, which is a good thing, because I know you keep track on these things. Marcus Edwards has finally signed a contract. Yes, get in there. The jewel in the crown of the academy has finally signed a two-year pro contract. He is bringing it, man. This is the time that we've all been waiting for. This is the Marcus Edwards time. Everyone has been sniffing around this kid. I've talked to you about it before. Barcelona, Real Madrid, Man City, jog on. All of these teams, they've been after him. Bayern Munich, they've all been keeping tabs on this kid. And for a while, we were getting worried that he wasn't going to sign. He was, he was, It was looking like he was going to maybe jump ship and move to one of these other clubs. And, you know, if you went to a Barca, could you blame him? We have got an amazing academy here, but he wanted the promise of first team football, at least to be in and around the first team. And apparently that's what we've given him. So it's a two year pro contract with a verbal agreement that he will get game time and a squad number. I have that on very good authority. You, you won't see it on the club website. You won't hear a press release coming out from the club. Apparently they want to keep it under wraps. You know, their policy anyway is not to really talk about the young players for obvious reasons. They don't want to hype hype them up or put pressure on them. But with Marcus Edwards in particular, there is a real effort being made by the club to really keep a lid on things. They want to make sure and keep it low key. And that's what they're doing. So you will start to see Marcus Edwards. He played against Juve in our first preseason match. And you will start to see him playing some cup games be in and around the first team. This is really, really good news, and we're finally going to see whether he can cut it at the top level. He's only 18, but he's amazing. Okay, so that's Marcus Edwards. Moving on to more sad news. Nia Kirby. Some of you will remember he was photographed training with the first team last season. A lot of people were like, who is this kid? I've never heard of him, Nia Kirby. And uh, basically, he was a very talented central midfield player, uh, came up from the under 15, started showing some real promise, and to incentivize him and to reward him for his good performances and the technique that he was showing, his good attitude, they allowed him to train with the first team. Brilliant, you're thinking. This kid is going to get some more chances at under 21 level. He's, he was playing really nicely alongside Marcus Edwards. You were thinking that these are the future. Unfortunately not. He refused to sign a scholarship contract that we offered him and he's gone to Chelsea. I mean, Chelsea, come on. What are you doing, Nia Kirby? I just don't understand it. If you're a young player, surely you're at the best place you could be. A club where you're going to get opportunities to break into the first team. It's happening. You're seeing it happen in front of your eyes. Why haven't you chosen progression? If you haven't chosen progression, what have you chosen? That's my question to you. My worry is money was involved. There, I've said it. I'm putting it out there. I don't really want to be saying it about a player like you, but you've got to ask the question. Have you moved for money? Are you going to get into in and around the Chelsea first team anytime soon? I don't think so. Good luck to you is all I can say. Moving on then, let's talk a little bit about the Euros in England at under-19 level. So we had Josh Anoma and Kyle Walker-Peters both travelling. To be fair, they both played the majority of the game time during all of the matches. England did quite well. We got through to the semi-finals where we lost against Italy. Uh, it was one of those performances in the end really where we should have done better but we didn't. And... From my perspective, and I know I'm biased, Josh Anoma was the best performer throughout, the most consistent performer throughout for, for England. Kyle Walker-Peters, solid as ever. Both of these players are going to be uh, in and around the first team again this season. I, I think Kyle Walker-Peters will probably get a loan move somewhere. Josh Anoma, I think you'll see him play more and more, get more game time, certainly with all the games that we got coming up this season. You already saw him in the, in the uh, Europa League last season against Borussia Dortmund. He is definitely, definitely going to be one that we're going to keep progressing through the first team ranks. Uh, and they both perform really, really well. Let's move on now to released and renewed. So very quickly, I'll give you a rundown. Emmanuel Sanupe for the uh, under-21s has been released. Bit of a shame. 
Uh, technically gifted player, played on the wing, played on the right wing ahead of Kyle Walker-Peters. They had quite a good rapport going, if you ask me. Um, played a lot last season. Um, would he cut it really at the top level? I'm not sure. That's probably why we've moved him on. It was just sometimes these players get to this level and then when you, when you need them to kick on, they just don't. And uh, I think that was the biggest thing for him. Sorry to see him go, but I hope he gets a contract somewhere else. For under 18 level, we've let Charlie Hayford go. I think he's, he's signed for um, uh, QPR or maybe it's Chris Paul. I'll, I'll have to check that one out for you and put it in the comments section. But Chris Paul and Charlie Hayford have both been released and both signed pro contracts elsewhere. And also Armani Daly has been released as well. Renewed though, let's bring it back to renewed. These players have been given a scholarship contract, a renewal, moving into their third years. Charlie Owens, Tom McDermott, the keeper, Ryan Loft, the striker, Joe Muscat, uh, a left back, uh, Zen and Stylianides uh, uh, all moved into their third year uh, scholarship contracts. I think with these players, they're showing promise, okay? They're not, they're definitely not the finished articles. None of them are in the academies, but they all need to be showing a little bit more, but there's obviously something there for the club in all of them that they can see potential. For some of them, I'm going to say, I think it's last chance saloon. I think they really need to step up this year. Um, there's been quite a lot of players that are moving on. The likes of Kyle Walker-Peters will probably go on loan. Uh, Connor uh, Ogilvie. Harry Winks. Harry Winks is crying out for a loan move. Look, if you're not going to give him first team game time, he needs to be playing men's football. That's it. Most of these players, Dominic Ball, again, you saw him at Rangers last season, looked really composed. He needs a loan move. Cameron Carter-Vickers. I don't think we're going to loan him out. I think he's going to be cover for the centre-backs. I think you will see him get some game time. But all of these players who've been solid for the under-21s for some, uh, quite a few seasons now are going to be either moved on to loan moves or they've just stepped up and they've outgrown youth football. So all of those players that I've mentioned that have been renewed into their third-year scholarships, it's time to step up, boys. It's time to make those positions your own. Make your case. This is it. This is your last chance. Philip Lesniak, who played... Um, any under 21 central midfielder last season. He has moved out. He's got a loan, a six month loan until January. He's moved to the Czech uh, side, Slovan Liberec or Slovan Liberec. I don't know. I'm sure someone will correct me out there. So let's move on to the predictions for this season then. For the under 21s and the under 18s, I'm not going to talk about the under 16s. To be honest with you, I haven't seen enough of them to be able to tell you where they are. We've got some very promising young players in that, in that group, but I haven't seen enough to give a prediction. The under 21s, I'm slightly concerned this season I think it's going to be mixed like I mentioned to you before a lot of the senior players uh, have moved either into the development squad on the fringes of the first team uh, or they're going to go out on loan so we are talking about players like Christian Magoma who is going to step up uh, into the central defensive uh, position left by Cameron Carter Vickers uh, Anton Walks uh, who's out with the first team at the moment with the senior squad uh, out in Australia. You will see Anton Walks, I think, playing at centre-back quite a bit more. He is, he's from, I've known him as a central midfielder for most of his time during the academy. He will be playing, I think, alongside Magoma as a centre-back. Tom Glover will probably start in goal. Um, he had a shaky first season. We're looking for more from him. Apparently, apparently, the word on the street is Potch rates him very, very highly as one of the best prospects at the club. I don't know. He, he's a good keeper. Whether he's a great keeper, time will tell. But I'm a bit worried. I think there are lots of players that are going to need to step up to the plate this season for the under-21s. And I'm not sure whether we're going to have enough to, to push on uh, like we have been doing and really sort of challenge and be up there as one of the top teams this season. Moving on to the under-18s, though. This year, it's going to be strong. Even without Nia Kirby. Even without Marcus Edwards, who will probably get a game or two for the under-18s. But he will most likely be in the under-21s team and in, the scene, in and around the fringes of the development squad. But even, forget all of that, we've still got players like... Keenan Bennett, Jaden Brown, Jaffet Tanganga, who will probably play for the, the under-21s quite a bit. Rio Griffiths from the under-15s will be coming up. Uh, Shiloh Tracy, Alfie Whiteman. I mean, Alfie Whiteman is a very, very good young prospect in, in goal. Already very highly regarded by the England setup. Uh, Sam Shashoa, Keziah Sterling. It's a very strong group of players this year. So I'm looking for big things from the under-18s, and I'm really hoping that they sort of consolidate that team ethic that they've got. They're all ballers. They're all going to step up to the plate and they're going to bring it this season. Let them be the future. 
Then the under 21s can be mixed in with them and the under 16s can come through. So it's going to be mixed for the under 21s. It's going to be good for the under 18s. That's my predictions for the season. This has been Youth Watch. I'll bring more next time. Leave your comments in the sections below. Tell me what you think. Is there any young players you think I should be keeping an eye on? Is there any young players that you know about that have stepped up into the academy? Who do you think we should be looking to base ourselves on? Should we be going for the, 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 the high press game like the, uh, the first team, like the senior team? Should all of our teams play in the same style? Leave your thoughts in the comments section below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'm Craig Vai, and this is Youth Watch. It's the match review, and uh, we've lost, unfortunately, mm. to Juventus 2-1. We played them in Melbourne, part of this. What is the name of the cup?